How's it all? And welcome to rainy South Africa. Uh, my name is Braden, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Fujifilm X-T4 and X-T3 and we, we're going to discuss the topic of whether or not you can use it for wildlife photography or even if you should use it for wildlife photography. Okay, so I just want to give you some context first. Um, I'm not a full-time photographer. I'm an economist by day uh, and in that job a big part of what I do is trying to figure out optimal solutions. Uh, so there's a lot of excellent solutions uh, and especially for wildlife photography you've got a whole host of new cameras like the Canon cameras and all of those things but excellent often implies expensive. Uh, and so what I'm trying to find is not to find the best camera for wildlife photography but is an optimal camera for me for wildlife photography uh, and so through the course of my digging and research over the last few years uh, I have repeatedly stumbled across the X series cameras uh, and yeah so I'm just going to give you a few points to why um, I do or don't think the Fuji camera will make a decent wildlife photography camera. I want to talk about price first. Uh, so price is a very important consideration when buying a camera, obviously. Um, but I don't want to go and spend 80,000 Rand or $4,000 on the best wildlife photography camera um, out there. It just doesn't make sense for my life situation, uh, for my set of priorities. However, if I was a full-time wildlife photographer, if I was in the bush most days, that equation would shift. Uh, my, essentially, my cost per day would come down a lot if I had a more uh, high-end wildlife photography camera. So what I'm trying to do is I'm someone that will go on a wildlife trip three to four times a year um, and I'll use a camera for about four or five years. So I'm trying to find a camera that fits well within that budget, that gives me the maximum punch uh, at essentially the lowest cost. So the, the I really think the Fuji cameras tick those boxes. Uh, so the the new Nikon Z6 and well, not new, but the Nikon Z6 and Z cameras are awesome, um, but they they're just really expensive in terms of range, uh, and it's the same for the Canon cameras. Uh, so if we were to look at uh, just a simple equation which is I work on those trips that I do every year uh, and I'm trying to sort of maximize the cost if I was to buy the top of the range Canon camera uh, it would cost me 80 grand uh, and if I went on my three trips every four years uh, it would end up costing me roughly about 7,000 rand a trip so that's three hundred dollars uh, and this is based on BNH's US prices and uh, camera as a South African company's local prices. Uh, the Fuji film currently just for the body and I'm excluding lenses for now just for the body costs 37 grand uh, which is still <laughs> fairly pricey um, and if I did my 12 trips the per trip cost of the camera would come down uh, to 3,000 uh, so that would be $140 uh, if I did that with the X-T3 which is on special at the moment for uh, uh, it's, I think it's 30 grand uh, and they're also doing those cashback promotions it comes down even further to uh, $2,000 a trip so let's call it $83 and um, so there's definitely an argument to be had for the value in terms of the usability, uh, it's, 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 a, it's not as comfortable as a Nikon camera, I'll, I'll definitely say that. And Nikon cameras, the weight sort of seems to be distributed across the palm of your hand. Whereas here, when you shoot in, the weight tends to like settle on one point in your hand. So I found after a day of shooting, I was actually like... A little bit callous there that I could obviously get used to that but it was just it wasn't the most comfortable thing also in terms of the um, the position of the front and rear dial so I just want to say 
these are great and it's great for day-to-day -day shooting um, but when you're in the wild uh, or in a situation where you need to change settings quickly it doesn't make sense to use these command dials at the top because then you need to like fiddle and it's it's just a waste of time um, instead it's really convenient you just set this your, your aperture setting to C um, and your shutter speed setting to T and I've kept the the, the aperture on the ring here, so sorry, this is the ISO um, shutter and the aperture um, and then you just use your front and rear command dial, the way you would on a normal camera. That is the only way I see that you can change settings quickly because if you start fiddling here, you almost negate the point of having a mirrorless um, camera because here I'm holding it to my eye, I can adjust exposure quickly. Um, I can tweak my compensation of uh, the composition, I can tweak the, uh, the, the exposure, I can see my histogram so I'm able to move things to the left or the right. Um, so those are, that's the main benefit of a viewfinder and that's why I think a viewfinder makes great, or electronic viewfinder is great for, for wildlife photography. The command dial, it's, it's nice but it's, I found I couldn't, it didn't feel natural to use my my index finger to change the command so instead I was using my middle finger um, to adjust the ISO or the shutter speed and ISO you don't change it too often um, so it's fine but the muscle memory wasn't quite there for me but that's something that will, will obviously come with time um, but yeah but otherwise it feels very grippy this okay just one more thing this drives me insane the placement of this because it's it just feels in the wrong place uh, for wildlife photography. My other camera has got it set further back so it sort of fits over the back of my hand here. Whereas here I didn't know if I needed to go round or... So if I did get this camera I would remove this completely and I just I wouldn't shoot with this track because it just it kept getting in the way and slowing me down. Um, but that aside, um, the, it feels really solid. It's chunky. The grip there is some depth here and I'm sure if you added the, the vertical hand grip it would um, sort of give it that depth that you get with, with Nikon cameras. Um, but it's still, it still, it feels solid. It's weather resistant and now it's drizzling a bit um, and I don't have to worry about that with my other cameras under an umbrella there. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's the ergonomics. So they, they're fine. They're not spectacular but Again, you have to think about the price. Like, is it is it good at that price point? And like, should I just spend an extra thousand rand and get the vertical grip, uh, and then it'll change the ergonomics? And it's still way cheaper than anything else. If you want to get into full frame, I think the most reasonable option you have is the Sony A7 III. Uh, in terms of vaguely price comparable to this, but it's still it still ends up being quite a bit more expensive, especially here in South Africa. Um, in the US, Europe, it's a slightly different equation uh, where the price is somewhat on par with this. Whereas here, yeah, it's still, there's quite a big difference. I just want to talk about autofocus. So I found the autofocus, one thing I really liked about this um, was the tracking AF. So that meant that I could lock on a subject um, and follow it around and I got a lot of flexibility. I was even uh, photographing wild dog. I'll include some pictures here. Um, and the, the tracking AF was really cool. There were a few more dogs in the frame. It became more difficult um, to track and it was also, it became difficult to lock it on specifically on the eye. And there's no animal eye AF here and I did try it. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't even think animals are people. Probably about 80% of the time I was using the tracking AF and then just tweaking my sensitivity settings um, to be able to follow the subject. I did miss a few shots depending on the, the, the continuous setting that I had. So you can see that there's five different continuous settings and then you can also do your own customization. But once I tweaked that, my, my hit rate or my in-focus rate was, was far higher. This was still a huge step up from what I have in my DSLR at the moment. It's a slightly DSL, older DSLR. Um, but the, able, the ability to track that subject and then just lock on instead of having to rely on that one little square and just hoping and praying that um, that, that square is in focus. Here you can see if it's in focus or not and you get in that almost instant uh, readout. The addition of IBIS 
to this camera so you can hear it rattling around. Um, that is also something that I found a huge benefit. The lens that you probably use is the 100 to 400, so that does have IAS uh, or inbuilt whatever Fuji calls image stabilization. So let's see, OIS, optical image stabilization. Um, but the combo of those two was just rock solid. Just one more point, and I think this is something that's important to consider when you, when you, when you're not like a full-time professional camera, is the fact that you want to be able to share photography with those around you. So it's important for me that my wife is able to take a photo as well, that she can just pick up the camera. And at the moment, with my current <laughs> setup, she can't do that. Whereas here, and this is a big point for the commander, I'll just switch the ISO to auto, I set the shutter speed, give it to her and she can fire away. Um, and it's a very easy camera for her to pick up and use. And this is also, if I'm going to the park three or four times a year, my opportunities are limited. Uh, so that means I need to maximize those opportunities. So if there's an animal on her side of the car, I need to be able to give her the camera and she's got a good eye so I can trust her to take the photo of the animal. Um, so just in a nutshell, when it comes to the Fuji X-T4, I really like this camera a lot. Um, I enjoyed the experience I've, I've had with it. It's a lot of fun to use. And the AF and the low light performance and all of those things were definitely up there with what I have and better in many cases than what I have at the moment. It's not the top end wildlife photography camera, but it's not aimed at being the top end wildlife photography camera. Um, but I did just, I've absolutely loved using it. So I'm strongly considering this. There are a few other options that I still need to investigate. Um, but that's my view on whether or not you can use the Fuji X-T4 for wildlife photography.